Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper with this somewhat provocative title about the high interest credit card of technical debt when building machine learning systems. And what this paper really talks about is how to engineer machine learning systems and what pitfalls to avoid. Now, full disclosure, this paper was written by people working at Google and I work at Google too. So the authors here use the metaphor of technical debt. Technical debt is the idea that you take engineering shortcuts in order to build and deliver a system within a given timeline. Technical debt is not always a bad thing. Sometimes it's important to get to market faster, but you do have to be aware of it. And it does tend to compound in the sense that if your system has a lot of technical debt, it becomes slower and slower and harder and harder to maintain the system and to add functionality to the system as time goes on. So what this paper talks about is all the anti-patterns, the things you should not do that lead to technical debt when building machine learning systems. And the hope is that you'll avoid these things and build more maintainable, cleaner machine learning systems and pipelines. The very first pattern is that machine learning tends to erode boundaries in the sense that it's hard to maintain layers of abstraction that can be thought of as separate modular things. Imagine a machine learning system that uses n features. If you change the input distribution of any one of these features, the model weights of the remaining features will also change. And the same with adding a new feature. If you add a new feature, the model weights of all the remaining features are very likely to change. What this means is that all your input features are intertwined in a way that you cannot think of them separately. The authors call this the case principle, which stands for changing anything changes everything. One mitigation strategy they suggest is to have separate models for separate sets of features and then combine their inputs or use them as an ensemble. But this doesn't always work. This only works if these subproblems decompose in a nice way. You also have to weigh the cost of maintaining all these separate models. The next big problem with large machine learning pipelines is controlling the visibility of your models. It's possible that your pipeline may have consumers that you don't even know about. This is referred to as visibility debt. And as more and more downstream systems depend on your model, it becomes harder and harder to make changes to your model without breaking all your consumers. They have an interesting and fun example over here. Imagine a CTR prediction system that gets consumed by another system that wants to tweak the font size of headlines. Now this creates a feedback loop because changing the font size might in turn change the CTR. And you can easily imagine the system having a runaway effect where it just determines that increasing font size will increase CTR. The next big area of technical debt is data dependencies. Now, unlike code, where you can see the dependencies between different parts of your code, there are tons of static analysis tools and linkage graphs and so on. It is next to impossible to see the dependencies between the various consumers and producers of your data pipelines. And it's very easy to build large complex data pipelines that are just entangled with each other and you have no clear idea what the dependencies among them are. One strategy often used is to have versioned copies of your data, but that also comes with a cost because then you have to deal with problems of freshness. Another type of data dependency is underutilized data dependencies. These usually take the form of input signals to models that don't really add much signal. These are features that you could remove with very little loss in the accuracy of the model. And the suggestion here is to regularly look at your model and see how much its input signals are contributing to its accuracy 
and then prune the signals that are not contributing much to the accuracy of the model. All right, this next one is pretty interesting and the authors call it a correction cascade. Now, very often you wanna build a model for a new problem by taking an existing model and layering a small correction on top of that. And this lets you solve your new problem pretty quickly. The thing is you can build chains of these correction models where you think of a second slightly different problem and then add a correction on top of the first correction. The problem is that with these cascading chains of corrections, it's very easy to end up in a situation where making a small change to the original base model makes the overall accuracy of your system much worse. So that was the various ways in which we can add technical debt when we construct models. Next, the authors turn their attention to how we construct these pipelines with all the glue code that goes into building a model and the pipeline that feeds data into a model. Now there's a trade-off here. If you start by using an off-the-shelf machine learning system, and there are plenty out there that have very wide usage, things like TensorFlow and so on, these are very general purpose systems. You have to write a large amount of glue code to massage your data into just the right format that can be consumed by these systems. And then also perhaps a large amount of glue code to take the output of these systems and get it into a format that is usable by your larger context. The problem is that this ties you into one specific general purpose solution. The authors claim that when you want to change or refactor your system, you will get the most gains by changing the construction of the problem space rather than by changing a machine learning algorithm that is used to construct a model. And changing that construction of the problem space becomes very hard when you have a lot of custom glue code to get data in and out of a generic machine learning package. And what they're suggesting is somewhat counterintuitive they're suggesting not using generic machine learning packages and instead rolling your own machine learning algorithm code. And this seems counterintuitive because it seems like very costly to re-implement machine learning algorithms that are already present in packages. But the gain comes from then having drastically lesser amounts of glue code and giving you an overall system that is much more agile and maintainable. They note from experience that most machine learning systems are 95% glue code and only about 5% machine learning code. And when you look at it that way, reducing the amount of glue code looks like a net win. The next problem is that of pipeline jungles, and this is going to be familiar to anyone who has built or maintained a large data pipeline. As you're getting data inputs from a variety of sources to feed into your ML model, it's very easy to end up in a state where you have a complex series of data manipulations and a complex series of inputs and intermediate files from a diverse range of sources. And this becomes really hard to comprehend and manage and change over time. Next, the authors talk about how machine learning systems should react to changes in the real world, to changes in the world about which they're making predictions. Let's look at the case where a model is trying to pick a threshold and then make a decision based on that threshold. For example, you try to predict a spam score for an email and say it's a number between 0 and 1. You have to still pick a specific number to determine whether something above or below that number is spam or not. How do you pick that specific threshold? The problem is that these thresholds are often picked manually. And then when the behavior of the real world changes, for example, if the distribution or types of spam change, this threshold becomes inaccurate. What the authors suggest is that you should re-evaluate your thresholds periodically 
on a set of holdout data. This is data that you haven't used for training. And as your model is making predictions or decisions about the real world, it's very important to keep checking the accuracy and correctness of your model. And this leads to the need for good testing and monitoring of machine learning systems. You want to monitor your system for various biases, things like prediction bias. You know something is wrong if the distribution of the labels that your model is producing is very different from the distribution of those labels in the data you're actually observing. You want to have some monitoring around action limits. If your model is making decisions in the real system, for example, marking emails as spam, you want to monitor that it is acting within some sane limits. What if it suddenly starts marking everything as not spam or everything as spam? So to conclude, this paper has talked about a number of pitfalls and ways in which you can add technical debt to a machine learning system. And this is going to make maintaining and evolving that system more and more painful over time. The authors don't mean to suggest that machine learning is bad or it shouldn't be used. They don't even want to suggest that you should avoid technical debt at all costs and always aim for technical perfection. That's just not realistic. This is just meant to be a catalog of anti-patterns so that you can watch out for them and also be aware of them so that maybe later in the life of your system, you can carve out some time to clean them up. So I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.